hey guys how are you doing so this video is a part of the 50 rust projects playlist so in case you're not aware about that go to my youtube channel playlists and check out the 50 rust projects playlist this is one of those videos okay so uh, till now we have learned quite a bit uh, so each project is sequential and it's uh, increasing in complexity and in today's video we'll be using all the concepts that we have already learned before so in the previous videos we made a request to hdbbin.org right we made a blocking request and we made an async await request today also we'll make a request to hdbbin.org but today's video is about authentication so we'll be calling a specific api uh, in on this website and uh, here if you see i've run my program the program is already built it's already on github so in case you want to follow along please copy the code from github in case you don't want to type everything on your own and um and you get a status 200 and that's that's what you want basically okay so let me show you the um uh, the the my chrome browser right now so i i hope you can see my chrome browser so firstly in my repositories you have to uh, i'm akhil sharma 90 on github you have to follow me you'll get access to all of these projects for free and this is the one we're talking about today rust basic auth so it's an extremely basic auth example with rust now uh, why do I want to do this? I want to teach you guys this because eventually we'll be building a JWT authentication tutorial, like a complete project. But that gets really complex for some people because I've done that in Golang and I know that it gets really complex for many people. So today I just want to get you used to the idea of uh, authentication and then, you know, 10 projects from now, 10 is maybe too much, maybe six, seven projects from now, we'll build an actual authentication, JWT authentication app. But for that, we'll also be using maybe MongoDB or something like that. So uh, that's why we're doing this today. Okay, so this is the website, hdbbin.org. Now, we can just make a request to this website, which we have been doing till now, but that's just the base URL. There are many other things that you can do. You can also call the auth API. So you have the basic auth API where you can pass your username, uh, user and password, which we've learned in the previous video, how to pass these variables here in the URL and how to create a URL and then make a request. So we'll be making a get request to this URL and passing user and password dynamically uh, as variables. So that's our main uh, agenda for today. Okay, so httpin.org website, calling the auth methods, calling, uh, making a get request to this particular uh, URL. So that is our plan. That is our agenda. So we will switch back to the um, Ubuntu. Okay, and then we'll now quickly create a new uh, project. So we'll say cargo uh, new, and here the name will be, let's say, um, auth, but for YT, yeah, auth for YouTube. And um, I will now CD into it. So auth and YT. So I'm inside that uh, folder now. And I'll open this up in my code editor. Now, uh, I, because I'm traveling right now, I don't have uh, multiple screens. So I will have to, uh, I won't be able to keep the terminal and this open at the same time. So I will have to switch to the VS code. Just, just give me a second. I'm not used to working with just one screen. <laughs> um okay yeah so let me open up the code editor where is the code editor i can't see it actually i'm not able to switch to it um auth yt right it's not showing up in the list okay yeah now it's showing up in the list okay so i hope you can see it uh but i think it's going off the screen so let me get just so please be patient guys with me trying to you know, wrestle with uh, this OBS streaming, especially on just one single screen, which I've never like, I've not done that much. Um, anyhow, so I hope now you can see my screen. Okay. Uh, here, what we'll do now is we will. Um, okay, yeah, so we have our cargo.toml file, this is the first place where we need to uh, put some dependencies. So the dependencies, we'll be using the standard old request dependency that we have been using till now. Okay, so we'll put the same here, the uh, request which we've used for so many times before. And in our main.rs file, what we will do now is we'll start writing the code. Okay, uh, what we'll, we'll begin with request. So you'll say use request and you'll say client 
and you'll also use request error all right then you will have your uh, function main with result comma error By the way, I'm in the city, and I'm in this place called Goa in India. It's an, it's an awesome, awesome uh, place to be at. Um, I'll be back in Bangalore in two days' time, and that's where I'll get access to my home studio to create the rest of the videos. But for now, this is all I have. So I apologize if the sound is not proper, if the um, you know if the if there's, if there's disturbance in the in the background also. If people are moving around in the background anyhow so here basically we're doing a, we're creating a new client and it's coming from the request blocking client right so we're accessing requests so request is going to help us make a request using the client uh, variable now uh, then we'll create a user so let's call it test user and then we'll convert into string just to be sure then we have password now why these specific uh, words because the url that i just showed you on the http bin website requires user user and passwd doesn't require password it just requires this particular uh, thing so that's why we are using this kind of a spelling some people might think that this is a typo it's not a typo it's actually what the http bin website requires Right, so password uh, in our case is an option string. Now uh, we will use our client, okay, and to to obviously make a request, but we will capture that in response because we'll get a response back after using the client. And uh, the client has, so we know that we have to make a get request, right? We saw that on the page http http bin dot org. And we know, let me show you actually, uh, in case there's confusion, let me show you. Oh, I just realized that it's only taking half of the screen. I don't know why. That's weird. Really sorry in case um, <laughs> he was trying to see it. Okay, so uh, the Chrome, right? And the Chrome you can see uh, in the uh, on, the, on the web page you can see that it requires something called a slash basic dash auth so we need to make uh, provisions for that so i'll switch back to uh, this and here we will now uh, make provisions for basic auth so it's a basic auth and here you say user comma password and you'll say dot send Okay, uh, and that that is it actually. That's the that's the code. At the end, you just have to print the response. So we won't say got response. We'll just print the response. Actually, the response uh, variable because that will hold the response. And to be able to print it properly, we will have to format it. So we'll say okay. And at the end because we're using result so we you have to say okay and empty that means everything went fine right so result is kind of an option which has an okay or an error so in case you need to uh, rust uh, we use result for error handling which will either have error or it will have okay and then in this case it is like okay so everything went uh, should should go fine that's what it looks like everything should go fine so now what we'll do is we will uh, I'll actually keep this screen open because I know it was it was uh, zoomed out. It was it was uh, not taking the whole uh, place on my screen, so I apologize for that. So I'll just keep it open in case you haven't been able to follow along. Please follow. Please make sure you type this whole code out, um, and then we'll go ahead and run it. So I'll just take a minute. Okay. 
So now let's switch back to our terminal. So let me um, go back to terminal. Where is it? Where is the terminal? Can't see it. This is the problem with OBS. Okay. So first, let me also save the code. Okay, the code is saved. All right. So. Here, what we'll do is we'll say cargo run. It'll take a while to build everything. So these dependencies like request, right? The request that we're using, these are quite big in size and they take a while to get downloaded. So it'll download the whole thing in your, um, in your you know, target folder, it creates a target folder for you then it compiles all of that and builds. So here it's at zero out of 107. So it'll take a while to build. Uh, what we can do till now, till that time is I can take a quick break. It'll take two minutes to build and I'll come back. So it was uh, successful, the, the re recent one at least. Before that, I did get a small error. Uh, basically, it took a very long time to uh, build. I, I was. I was away for a while. <laughs> um, I was a, I was at the beach, basically taking a swim. It's very close from here. Anyhow, uh, in case you have not been to Goa, make sure you go to Goa. It's in India. It's an awesome, awesome place. All right. So here the issue was that it was expecting a semicolon, and I had left the semicolon here at the end of uh, this line. Now with Rust, right? Uh, with Rust, you get very specific errors. And you also get the place where you should add that thing that's missing. So uh, with Rust, you don't have to be a genius to code, uh, you know, because it'll really, really help you. With JavaScript, even though the language is really uh, easy to understand, the errors are really, really bad, right? Error handling is pathetic. Uh, with Rust and Golang, uh, the the learning curve is, uh, is 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 big, and people, you know, they don't end up learning these languages. But once you've learned them, right? Once you've learned them. Uh, all the softwares that you build will be so much more reliable and uh, so much more stable than anything else you've ever used before. With Rust, especially with Rust, that's what I, I've realized that this, the software that you build with Rust is very, very solid and stable uh, because it catches so many issues during runtime itself, during compilation, that it'll you know not let you write any wrong code basically. Anyhow, so we have fixed that, and uh, after I fixed it, after after I put that semicolon at the exact place where it told me to put the semicolon, everything works fine. I got 200 status response. So that was it guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this session. And in the next uh, video, we'll do something more interesting. Um, let me, I, I'm sure I have shown you the entire code, but in case you haven't seen it, here it is, the whole thing again. Um, there's also uh, the whole code on GitHub. Make sure you uh, follow me on GitHub. You star these repositories that you pick up. Uh, make sure you star them because you'll be able to find them much more easily in the future. And also, I'll get a star, so that's a great thing. <laughs> All right, so I'll see you in the next video. I hope you've subscribed to this channel.